your girl Amber and I'm here with my homie. I'm Bree, y'all, what's up? What's up? We're sitting here to talk to you guys about basketball stereotypes, mm -hmm. especially just women's basketball stereotypes. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've encountered a lot of them, so we're gonna talk to you guys about some of the stuff that you guys listen on my Instagram story and then our personal stories, you feel me? And if you didn't know, Bree's a basketball player and you play college ball. I played college ball in Texas. I played professionally in Spain, Turkey Republic, in New Mexico, and then I played with the Harlem Globetrotters. Yeah, and that's how we met. First of all, I saw this one on Instagram so long ago. It was your video where you were doing tricks on the treadmill. On the treadmill. <laughs> Yo, the it was the coolest <laughs> shit I've ever seen. Well, I followed you for a while, and then, then you followed me, and then we started linking up. And then anyway, so we've been cool for a couple years now. We talked about doing a video for a really long time. And I think at that point, I was actually still attempting to play basketball, mm -hmm. but not anymore. No, so anyway, think. now she's just my friend that does cool ass tricks. Y'all better follow Brie on Instagram, because you know she's cute. You know what I'm saying? Y'all already over there like, oh shit, <laughs> who that? Okay, should we name some stereotypes that we heard? Yep. Number one, obviously, is every woman basketball player is what? Lesbian? And a lesbian, like for real. That's number one. Number Check two <laughs> is that they're players. Not basketball players, play. Play like P L A Y A. A S. Yeah, they play. <laughs> like we cannot be committed in a relationship. You feel me? They're good with their hands. True. <laughs> I mean, we're just gonna go ahead and say that they all dress masculine or tomboys. We only wear sweats to class. That's a fact. The another one are emotionally unavailable. I hear that because a lot of women seem to be really cocky in sports. You think that's true? I can see why they feel like that. I've I experienced it. I, I've experienced it too. And you don't even gotta be that good, but I'll be seeing like hoopers that just be so cocky. And yeah. Just, I guess it's like that hooper swag. Like, yeah. I feel like hoopers got their little swag. Yeah, we got swag. It's we don't have to be arrogant though. It's a different type of swag. Oh, yeah. aggressive in bed. <laughs> A lot of these were from you guys, so let's go through and say which ones mm -hmm. you've experienced. I literally, I think I checked off every single one. I know, right? <laughs> Lesbian. Yeah. Check. Well, when did you start hearing that? My high school was an all-white private school, Same. so I was like the only one that I thought was gay. But my AAU yeah. team, it was like the entire team was gay and lesbian. Yep. It was just like, we would go on a AAU trip, yep. and team trips, and we would look forward to the hotels. and Yeah. I mean, we like 13, 15 Hell years yeah. old, but I don't know, it was probably around then when I started hearing it more. I want to say, I think the first couple times I heard it, like seventh and eighth grade, but it wasn't that big of a deal. Also, private Catholic school, all white. And then in high school, you know, most of the people of color were on the sports teams. Yep. So we did have a good amount of all the black girls on the basketball team, but I definitely felt like I was probably the only gay one. The freshman, sophomore year, you know when people play when they just want to play, but they're not like really that good. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's not until like later on, they're like, oh, okay, only the good people yeah. can keep going. Yeah. And yeah, so I think early on, we had a couple, but definitely I think because of Catholic school, nobody wanted to be out. I was good enough to be on an AAU team with some older girls. And I think that was the first time they like grew into the who they were that I found out that most of them were lesbians. Oh, yeah. And I was like, oh shit. You know, we didn't even call each other that. It's just like, oh, I like girls. Or I like this person on the team. When I was in sixth grade, I played for the high school team, the varsity team. Mm -hmm. And there were a couple of girls that were like out and open. And I was like, Dang. Dang. Yeah. Especially freshman and sophomore year, they would call me a lesbian right away. Like we'd show up and they'd be like, are oh, you a basketball player? Oh, you're a lesbian. And I was like, dang, they were so rude about it. And they were so negative. And I just thought it was so crazy that people just come at you like that. I got defensive because I wasn't even sure. Like I felt like I did like women, but to straight out just call every basketball player a lesbian yeah. was just rude to me. It's crazy because my first girlfriend, she also played for the all girl private school, but we were on the elite team together and she was over than me. You feel me? You know, we were like best friends and we were just like, had a moment and then boom, we kissed and I was like, oh. Why is this like the same story? Yeah. <laughs> right? Dang, that's crazy. Mine was the same thing. It was my best friend. Yeah. But I didn't stop her. I was like, yeah. I'm okay with it. I know, right? <laughs> I was automatically like, Comfortable and it's like I knew what to do. Yeah, and that goes hand in hand with the they're good with their hands. Obviously, like to handle a ball. Yeah, you gotta. Yeah, you, I'm good with your hands. Gotta explain that. One. Okay. <laughs> okay. The first time they called you a lesbian, were you mad about it or? I feel like I was approached differently. Like people said it more aggressively. Like yeah, like me she too. you a dyke. 
Like, yeah. you will be oh, a yeah. dyke. And I'm like, I feel like I've never really cared about people's opinions like that. Like, yeah. I've always been comfortable in my own skin. I was always a tomboy, like, running around with my shirt off, playing with the guys. When did you come out? Technically, I came out, it was like my freshman year in college. Oh, wow. I didn't come out till way later, after college, 26 or something. My mom's the one who's like waiting on me to tell her my yeah. brother. The Same. last person I went to know was my dad. Mine too, me too. He's just, yeah. But, like, my dad's like more old school religious black man so he was the last person i was going to tell yeah same you know one time in au like in high school one of the dads found out that his daughter was messing around with a girl on the team it was an old school black guy yep. he got so mad that he wanted to take the whole team down with him right so he started <laughs> calling all the parents he hit my mom with oh your daughter is a lesbian and she did this to my daughter and she like and he was blaming every single person on the team that it was their fault that his daughter was like this when yep. she was like the leader of it man <laughs> my mom and i were not that close but like she always had our back if anything happened so she shut him down she's like how dare you you're disgusting for this you don't do this to young growing women and then looked at me and was like do you have anything to say to me and I was like no and she's like okay and then she just left it both of my parents dropped it I was scared of letting my dad down now he calls me to tell me about girls you know what I'm saying it's Same cool with my dad he did a full circle he loved my girlfriend he would call her check in on her yeah. ask her how she is what she's doing he tells her he loves her like yeah. if you knew my dad like teen years ago to now i seen this man at the gay pride my dad would never be at a gay pride he, i don't know if he thought i was gonna be different like once mm -hmm. i came out i'm like dad i'm the same person yeah there's nothing different i'm still your baby girl like yeah. i'm the exact same person i just like women yeah, that's it. I like what you like. Right. You see what and you, you gonna like them too. You like them too. Like yeah. <laughs> but I also experienced my first year transferring in college. My team wanted to know what team I was on. Mm -hmm. So bad that they were hazing me. Like they were doing everything to try to bust me out or like tell on me. And I just was like, I don't even know y'all like that. And I remember that feeling and I was like, I never want someone else to. Experience that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got off subject. Yeah, back to <laughs> back to the stereotypes. Players. Oh yeah. You were a player. Okay, listen. You were a player though. I'm not gonna sit here and deny that I haven't been <laughs> Not always, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I, I've definitely had my player ways. Player way tendency. Kobe, I was on a Instagram live. It was like, they did like a blind date or whatever. Mm -hmm. like, as soon as I got on, everybody looked and they like, oh, she's a player. She be cheating, she be doing all this. Oh, and I'm like, dang, I don't even know me. You're right. It is associated with basketball. Because girls are attracted to basketball players, so we just collect girls or whatever. It was furthest from the truth. You know what I'm saying? I was never a player like that. And I had to like, do the most. Even now to this day, people, Assume when I'm single that I'm like that. I'm just like not. I can't be equal chicks in the house. You feel no, me? No, I be Bob. I be chilling. Yeah, <laughs> honestly, yes, there are people that do fit these, and that's why there these stereotypes happening. Because I have had people on my team that are players are like arrogant. The other one attached to that is emotionally unavailable. You know, with everything, it's always like a person by person case. You shouldn't be carrying stereotypes across like a whole culture of yeah. women. You know what I'm saying? I mean, there are a lot of girls that are not gay. I have a lot of basketball friends that are straight and they know, they get these stereotypes and they just laugh. Yeah, I remember at college, we were just trying to figure out who, is she gay? He's yeah, gay. yeah. She gay, who? But high school, I was the only one. AU. Like the entire Everybody. city. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think it has something to do with a brace? I know, I was just thinking about that right now. Because, because on, on my white team, on yeah. my high school was all white mainly. There was like two, three black girls. I was the only one. College, it was like four white girls, everybody else was black. All the black players were gay. Mm. I was just like trying to like correlate the two right now because my Catholic school, I write off just because people were scared to be out in general. But I was on an all white AAU team. Yeah. And then I was on one that was, you know, the inner city uh, girl, so it was like, mostly all black team and then I was on an elite team and it was just like all the best ones from every school. I don't know, it seemed like no, the white team were lesbians too. Like, I don't know, they just did it differently. I would say the ratio was smaller there. So like, I would say half and half. And then in college, my first year, I remember one of the reasons why I didn't come out, there was only one out girl my first year. Then when I transferred, it was a good like half and half, I think, mixed. But we were also talking about with like other sports, like softball. And there's a lot of white girls and there's a lot of gay girls yeah softball. yeah okay that's another thing too have you been an experiment not that i know have you ever met a girl that was like oh yeah i always wanted to see what it'd be like to date yeah. like a basketball player girl like and um, they're not even gay no no not that's I, happened i to mean me, at least man. not that i know maybe yeah i'll be used man yeah you may it's fine whatever 
<laughs> At least I gave them a good experience. Yeah. You, know, you know what I mean? It's fine. Did they convert or did they stay? Most of the time. Like they either turn bisexual or gay. You well, know what I'm saying? To the dark side. I, no, I love contributing to a community. <laughs> well, you can give back. And it's like I'm doing sign ups. Okay, so the other one is that most present as masculine or they are tomboys or always wear sweats in, you know, athletic gear. Like I get why people say they present as masculine, but I also think that that is a stereotype across women in general. If you're just like an alpha woman or you're really good at what you do, whether it's like you're building houses or you're a really good lawyer or you're really good in your sport, they're always gonna look at you as masculine because- I'm dominant. Yeah, you're dominant, you're, you're great at what you do. And a lot of times I think that it's not right to just put women in that category just for them being great at something. But I do understand because we are, as athletes, in shape. Mm -hmm. And I do think that I present as masculine, but I don't think that should be a stereotype across the board just because you're a woman in sports. Yeah, even like Serena. Yeah. Who's obviously not gay, not any of that, mm -hmm. but since she's like so built. just built mm -hmm. and powerful and beastly. She's the first person I thought of and that's why I said that like all the time. That's why it's crazy you brought her up. But people attack her like that. All yeah. She's been attacked all the time just for being a powerful, thick woman. You know what I'm saying? Think about it when she was in the Beyonce video and people were like commenting negative stuff because she was dancing. Like she's got that a lot and I, I feel like a lot of women have in general. And so that's one thing I don't like just because I see it a lot in sports. When women are just good at what they do, yeah. it's like, they're masculine. Mm -hmm. The other side, like you talk about sweat sweat pants, yeah, yeah. That's definitely me. Like I'm, like I'm comfortable. Right. And in college, I used to wear sweatpants every single day unless I had like a presentation. Mm -hmm. Like it don't even make sense. Like why do I gotta get dressed up? Mm -hmm. Like right after workouts, I'm just gonna be sweaty again. Like, exactly. I like to be comfortable. I, exactly. That's just what it is. And a lot of times, I don't know about you, but I was tired. Yeah. I was Especially in college. Yeah, I would go to class in sweats or, or my athletic stuff. I probably came from practice, had to take a shower and go right to class. 6 a.m. practice. On the court, laced up 5.30 in the morning. Yeah, I did. 5.30 in the morning. We would practice from 5.30 in the morning to 8 and my coach would make us all go to straight to a yoga or Pilates class. And so it's like double workouts. And then the class. And then, yeah, but I, yeah, I would have one class in the afternoon, be able to go and do some homework, and then have classes at night. You think I won't get dressed up for that? Exactly. No. So leave us alone. Right. I'm sick of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's hella funny because I, I feel like this conversation comes up a lot and like where we start talking about like stereotypes and how what everybody else got growing up and that's why I wanted to have this conversation especially with the homie that literally like ball is life you feel me yes ball is life so you guys make sure you, you follow Bree you feel me support Bree I need it. I'm out here in these streets in LA I need it y'all okay so YouTube channel in the link we already threw the Instagram up there so uh, yeah I want to know what you guys think have you guys experienced any of these stereotypes like well, if so, what are they? How did you feel about them? Put it all in the comments below so we can like see your guys' experience as well. But make sure you guys pop over to Bree's channel because we're gonna do a video over there. It's about to be crazy. Y'all don't wanna miss it. <laughs> what are we doing? We playing shoot your shot, which is a truth or dare with basketball. We're gonna learn about her. She's gonna have to expose the truth, do the dare, or just like be good at basketball. Let's if see. you're good at basketball, then you ain't really got to worry about it. I haven't shot in a really long time, but let's just see what happens. Oh, I'm, about to be, I'm about to be sipping that tea. All right, y'all. So make sure you guys uh, go click the link down below and go check out the video we did on Bree's channel. All right, I love you guys. Stay amazing. Stay proud. Stay woke. Always. Stay woke. Stay woke, baby. Now what? What you? What's that three-point shot look like? No, we didn't see nope, it. we ain't there yet. No. All right, we're going to do a layup. Oh, reverse layup. Reverse, baby. Okay. I think I'm too tired for a layup. Victory lap. I'm doing too much. You, oh yeah. You feeling good, I guess. No, I'm not. <laughs> baby. Hey. Wow. In there, baby. Oh, we got another lap. We got. She's feeling good now. She's feeling good. I'm going. Victory lap. Look at this basketball player in her prime. Oh, what the hell? You just busted out. With, look at that. That is not even fair. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Oh, on this court, it's tough. I know, I, that's what I was trying to tell you. There's like little bumps. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we out here. Who wants us? Two on two. Let's go.